up, alert rest. Demons approaching, fighting back to back for these laws. You think it's a story? The Bible playing out in front of you, like a murder. You being the witness, victim, and the murderer. I see we on the same page, but you don't buy his precepts. You're void of understanding, but we men are here to teach you. Laws for repentance so again. Where where you step? He said, I got a promise that he's coming. Like a line out the dungeon for the scattered abroad. You laugh in the blob, but I'm just happy I fought with every breath that I puffed. I was mad in the mud, cause this life, it was forced. And I was in the past, and just see and join it, of course. I found you found a reason. It seems it, it explains why we're bleeding. Mistreated by the beat like a vegan. I need you to pay close attention. Today we're going to discuss what is heaven and hell. What is heaven and hell? There's a lot of conceptions and misconceptions regarding heaven and hell. I'm going to begin with heaven first before I get to hell. When you read the, uh, the Bible, well, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, let's go to Genesis 1 and 8. The first understanding, heaven has four. Heaven has four meanings behind it. Four. I'm going to show you. The first meaning, write this down, the firmament. The firmament, which is referring to our sky. Genesis 1 and 8, please. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 1 and verse 8. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the day and the morning were the second day. So on the second day, God created the firmament. Okay, that is our sky. Write this down. Still dealing with the firmament being called heaven. Give me Genesis chapter 7, verse 23. This is the book of Genesis chapter 7 and verse 23. And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground. Both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of the heaven. And they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained alive. And they that were with him in the ark. Did anybody pick it up? Or y'all, he ran through it, right? Y'all, nobody, y'all missed what he read? Read it again, Slow. Verse 23. And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of the heaven. And the fowl. The word fowl is birds. The birds. Of, so when it says the birds of heaven, what do you think it's talking about? Out there in uh, outer space? No, the birds of heaven is talking about the birds that fly in the air. Making reference to the firmament. This is what it's talking. This is one understanding of it. Write this down. You're gonna be you may be asked sometime in the future. Give me Genesis chapter eight and verse two. This is the book of Genesis, chapter eight and verse two. The fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped. And the rain from heaven was restrained. And the rain from heaven was stopped. So what do you think this heaven was talking about? Talking about the firmament from the clouds. Our sky. Do everybody see that? All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Give me Revelation uh, chapter 19 and verse 17. This is the book of Revelation chapter 19 and verse 17. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. And he cried with a loud voice, saying, To all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven. To all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven. It's talk, that heaven there is referring to our sky. It's not referring to where the Most High dwells. All right? So make sure you're writing this stuff down. So you got to, when you read the Bible, I, was, I remember Deacon Ithan went over it with the brothers and sisters regarding translations. You have to keep the words in their cultural context. One word can have several different meanings. Hmm, can I give an example of that? How many different ways can you say you're going to beat the hell out of somebody? Just think. Just think for a moment. Think. For example, I'm going to kick your 
blunt. I'm going to kick your head. That's one way. Now, if you don't know the language, someone, let's say someone from China who's learning English, and he go, I'm going to kick your ass, and think you're going to kick the donkey. No, that's not the ass we're talking about. We're talking about the person's ass. You understand? You got to put words in the context of the culture speaking. So with that one term, it can mean different things. Um, I'm going to slap the SH out of you. Somebody not understanding language will go, he's going to slap and the man will poop. And suggest an expression of I'm going to hurt you. Okay? We can say, I'm going to F you up. Okay? That's another way. Somebody, what does this word mean? What is this? You can say different things, different ways, all meaning the same thing, and vice versa, okay? Watch this. So, second meaning of heaven. Give me Genesis 1, verse 14. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 1, and verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven. Let let there be lights in the firmament of heaven. Go ahead. To divide the day from the night. Uh -huh. And let them be for signs and for seasons, for days and years. Uh -huh. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. Go ahead. And it was so. Mm -hmm. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. So this heaven... Is this talking about our sky? No. This heaven that he's talking about, where you got the sun, the moon, and the stars, is referring to space. Everybody understand that? Everybody see that, okay? Showing you another, using the same word heaven, but he's talking about something different. Give me Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 13. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 13. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Mm. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the Lord. So when he says he will exalt his throne above the stars of God. Read that part again. I just want that part about heaven. Read that part. I will ascend into heaven. I will ascend into heaven. Go ahead. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. So is he talking about the sky or is he talking about space? Space, space that's what he's talking about. Okay, very good. Write that down. The third understanding of heaven. Watch this. Give me 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 2. This is the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 2. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Paul is referring to himself. This, he's giving us a little parable here, but he didn't just want to come out and say, I'm talking about myself. Read it again. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Uh -huh. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God up to the third wait, heaven. Wait, wait, just read it right. Read it again. I'm sorry. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such and one caught up to the third heaven. Such a one caught up to the third heaven. Go ahead. Verse 3. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body. We want to see what this third heaven is. Go ahead. I cannot tell. God knoweth. How that he was caught up into paradise. So the third heaven he's talking about is paradise. What do you think this heaven is talking about? Anybody got an idea? Yes. The kingdom. Ex caught the most highest kingdom. So you have our sky, which is heaven number one. You have space, heaven number two. Where the most high dwells is the third heaven. That's what he's talking about. Everybody understand that? Watch this. Give me Genesis 28, 12 through 17. This is the book of Genesis chapter 28 and verse 12. This is about Jacob, our forefather Jacob. Go ahead. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. 
And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. So the forefather Jacob had a dream. This dream he saw a ladder, like a huge staircase. He saw angels going up and down from heaven. Go ahead. Verse 13. And behold, the Lord stood above it. And behold, the Lord stood above it. At the top of the ladder, or the staircase, in our term, we use that term. You, he saw the Lord up there. Go ahead. So we know that where the Lord is was what? The what heaven? The third. the third. Go ahead. And said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest. To thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee, and in thy seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And That's be talking about the seed of Israel through Christ. That's what it's talking about, man. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into the, this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place. This is none other but the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. That's where the movie Stargate came from. That's where they got the inspiration from. Any of y'all saw that movie Stargate? Where they went from, uh, I believe they were in America, they went back to ancient Egypt. Okay, there was a gate, like a portal. Esau based that, the white man bases all their, their scientific stuff on things they have researched in the Bible, our records. So, our forefather Jacob said, this is the gate of heaven. So in this gate, he said, the angels were ascending and descending. There was a passageway from earth to heaven. Okay, so this is the third heaven. From there, give me Hebrews 9. No, I mean, I'm sorry. Give me Psalms 33, 13. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 33 and verse 13. The Lord looketh from heaven. He Look. beholdeth all the sons of men. The Lord looketh from heaven. And so it's talking about the third heaven. Okay. Go over to Hebrews 9, verse 24, please. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 9 and verse 24. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the truth, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. So that heaven that he went into is talking about the third heaven with God himself, the most high God is. So, so far we've addressed and shown you in brief three levels of understanding regarding heaven. One being our sky, the second being space, and the third being when the Heavenly Father dwells. Now I'm going to give you the next understanding. Give me uh, Hosea 12 and 10, please. This is the book of Hosea, chapter 12 and verse 10. I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. Right. So you got to be aware that sometimes when a prophet wrote, they wrote in similitudes. Another word for similitudes is parables or metaphors, or another word is allegories. Okay, so now let me give you the fourth understanding of heaven. Lamentations chapter 2 and verse 1. This is the book of Lamentations, chapter 2 and verse 1. How hath the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger? The daughter of Zion is making reference to the 12 tribes of Israel. Watch this. And cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel. So how was Israel cast down from heaven to earth? Were the Israelites flying in the sky? No. Were they flying in space? No. Were they flying in the third heaven? No. It's talking about rulership. Under King David, King Solomon, various kings, we were the dominant nation on the earth. And when we sinned, read it again. How have the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with the cloud in his anger? He was angry with us. Go ahead. 
and cast down from heaven and cast down from heaven unto the earth unto the earth the beauty of Israel the beauty of Israel so we went down he cast us down meaning we went into what slavery that's what he's talking about we were cast down from heaven to earth that's talking about our condition went from the top ruling nation to the lowest um let's prove that I'm gonna show you a precept with that give me Deuteron Deuteronomy 28 verse 43 and 44. Here's a precept. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. You see that? The Israelites shall come down very low, meaning cast to the earth. Read. Verse 44. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. See that? Thou shalt be the tail. I mean, in the Israelites, we would be the tail of all nations, the bottom of society. That's what he's saying. Now, let me show you another precept about condition. Isaiah 14 and 12. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 14 and verse 12. This is a famous church scripture, which they don't understand, but we're going to read it anyway. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? He's saying the same uh, contextual use as lamentations. But now it's talking about Lucifer. Lucifer here is not talking about the spiritual demon Satan. It is talking about the United States of America in a similitude. Uh, read the bottom of verse, is it verse 4 or 1 about Babylon? Or 3? Is it verse 4 or 3? I'm not looking at it. Verse 4. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, how have the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. So what I want you to see that Babylon was an oppressive city. Babylon was the golden city, meaning the most beautiful, most richest kingdom on earth. This is referring to America. Now when we jump down, he's still talking about the same subject. Verse 12 again. Verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? He's calling Babylon, the golden city, Lucifer. It's the same thought. Go ahead. Son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? Which did weaken the nations. So now, notice it says, how art thou fallen from heaven? Meaning, how art thou fallen from rulership? How art thou fallen from ruling? That's why it says in verse 4, that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, how hath the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased, meaning they've stopped ruling. That's what it's making reference to. Here's another one. Give me Deuteronomy 11, verse 21. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11 and verse 21. That your days... Now this is when we came out of Egypt with Moses. Watch what Moses says to the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. That your days may be multiplied and the days of your children and the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. So when he says to give us the days of heaven upon earth, that don't mean us flying up in the sky. It don't mean us flying up in space or where the most high is. He said well, he's going to give us such a rulership. It's going to be like it will be heaven on earth. That's what he's talking about. So I'm showing you the four uses of the word heaven. Let's get some more in that same condition. First Chronicles 28.5. This is the book of 1 Chronicles, chapter 28 and verse 5. And of all my sons, for the Lord hath given me many sons, he hath chosen Solomon, my son, to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. You see that? So the kingdom of the Lord was Israel. Many times you ask people, but what is the kingdom of the Lord? We will jump up and say, the third heaven with the most high dwell. No, it's referring to Israel in rulership. The kingdom of the Lord was Israelites in rulership on earth. Watch this. Give me Matthew 11, verse 12. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 11, and verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. Who was the ruling nation during the time of Matthew when this was chronicled and scribed Christ was on the earth who was the ruling empire 
The Roman Empire, very good. The Roman Empire was the ruling government at that time. So they were the violent. Read the verse again. Matthew 11 and verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. Go ahead. And the violent take it by force. And the violent take it by force. Rome took Israel. Took Israel down. Destroyed Israel. Okay, the year was 70 AD, which was later on. And they totally wiped us out. But notice it says, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. Does that mean Rome jumped up in the sky and punching the most high in the face? No! The kingdom of heaven that suffered were the Israelites. The kingdom of heaven that suffered was the Israelites. Everybody understand that? Okay, let's get some more. Acts chapter 1 and verse 6. This is the book of Acts, chapter 1 and verse 6. When they, therefore, were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? You see that? Will you restore the kingdom to Israel? The what kingdom? The kingdom of Israel, as the kingdom of the Lord, which is the kingdom of heaven on earth. That's what we're talking about. Because the kingdom was always for Israel. Always. But the churches would teach us otherwise. Watch this. Give me 2 Peter 3 and 6. This is the book of 2 Peter, chapter 3 and verse 6. I'm going to read down. Uh -huh. Whereby the world that when was being... No, oh, no, read it right. I'm sorry. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water, perished. So Peter's talking about the flood. During the time of Noah's ark, okay, the flood came upon the earth, the waters rained from heaven 40 days, 40 nights, everything died except what was on the ark. Go ahead. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment, and perdition of ungodly men. So this, the world is now reserved unto fire. Many times people think the nuclear weapons were created for no reason, no purpose. No, only ones that think that are black and Latin people because we are very unlearned and foolish people. The scholars, as well as our forefathers, the prophets, knew that these things were created for the destruction which was prophesied here to come. Read that verse again, verse 7. Verse 7. But the heavens... And what I want you to see, see that S at the end of heavens. But the heavens... Go ahead. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So the question is, what are those heavens? Are those heavens... So you mean the fire is going to burn up the sky? Is this fire going to burn space up? Is this fire going to burn up the third heaven? Let's see what this fire is going to burn up. As we read down, it's going to explain. Go ahead. Verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Mm -hmm. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness. That's why some of our brothers and sisters out of the Lord are coming back. I've been hearing about that Bible forever. Oh, he's coming back. Everything he's prophesied has come to pass. He's just patient that we repent and get our lives right. Go ahead. But his long suffering to usward. See that to usward. The usward is Israel, the Israelites. Go ahead. Because Peter, who wrote this, was an Israelite. Go ahead. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Mm -hmm. the, so that the, the all <laughs> is the same as the usward. The Israelites, go ahead. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. The heavens shall pass away with a great noise. Boom! That's what it's talking about. Thermonuclear destruction. Go ahead. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. So notice, the heavens, see that S at the end of heaven, heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. So the heat that's going to burn up the elements is here on earth. It's talking about the kingdom on earth, the kingdoms of earth being done away with, wiped out. 
taken down. So the sky is not going to be destroyed. Space is not going to be destroyed. And you sure better know the most high is where he dwells is not going to be destroyed. The heavens that's going to be eliminated is right here on earth. Go ahead. With fervent heat, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. You see that? The earth, he's explained it. The earth also and the works that are therein. So that includes America, Babylon the Great. That includes China, France, Russia, Germany. They're going to be ashes. Go ahead. Verse 11. Saying then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, uh -huh. looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire. You see that? The heavens being on fire. Look at what it says. The heavens being on fire. talking about the kingdoms on earth being on fire. That's what it's talking about. Go ahead. Shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, Look for new heavens. New heavens referring to new kingdoms. Go ahead. And a new earth uh -huh. wherein dwelleth righteousness. Right. So that's not saying a planet's going to blow up because that's not what it's talking about. <laughs> so again, the four references to heaven. One was the firmament, talking about our, our sky. That's one. Number two, space. Number three, where the most high dwells. Number four is a condition of rulership. Everybody understand that? That's right. Now let's talk about hell. There are three words translated in the Bible for hell. Three words. These three words are used as similar to, it's like we read in uh, Hosea 12 and 10. All right. Read that again so we get the thought again. I want y'all to forget and go to sleep. This is the book of Hosea chapter 12 and verse 10. I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. Mm. Give me Psalm 78 and 2. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 78 and verse 2. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will open my mouth in a parable. A parable is an illustrated story. That's another word for similar to that we just read in Hosea chapter 12 and verse 10. Go ahead. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from our children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he have done. From there, give me Matthew 13 verse 10. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 13, and verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. So the question was, why do you speak to the people in parables, meaning illustrated stories? Why do you talk like that? We just explained in the heat, Hosea 12 and 10. He multiplied visions by the ministry of the prophets and used similitudes. He would utter his mouth in dark sayings and parables. So here in the New Testament, he's saying the same exact thing. And it was only given to certain Israelites. The understanding of the Bible was never given to all Israel. You know why? It keeps order that way. There's going to be a ruling government when Christ returns. Everyone is not going to be equal. You're going to have... Christ, you're going to have the 12 apostles, under them you're going to have the 144 uh, elders, and under them you're going to have other men and women. There's going to be there's ain't nobody, this thing of everybody's the same, that's going to be done away with. You don't see no country that does that. The only time you see that is in black and Latino neighborhoods. I would say communities, but we don't have black and Latino communities. <laughs> we have neighborhoods. Give me um, Second Samuel. Which so write this down. There's three references to hell in the Bible. Three references. If you start to research on your own, which is fine, I do encourage everyone to do research. 
the word hell is used in three, form, three similitudes. One is a low state or condition. Write this down. Hell also is used as a low state or condition. That's one. Number two, it can be making reference to the grave. Number three, it can be making reference to fire or destruction, use the same context. Three words must be kept in their proper cultural context. I know some brothers like to research things, and that's fine, we do encourage that. There's a Hebrew word for hell, it's called sheol, S-H-E-O-L, write that down, sheol. It's used in the Bible, when you get, if you get a strong skin corner, it's used 65 times. 31 times it's used making reference to the grave, Another 31 times it was translated as the word hell. So 31 was translated for the word grave. The same word was used for the word hell. Then three times it was translated for the word pit, P-I-T, pit. All making reference to hell being used from the Hebrew word sheol, S-H-E-O-L. There's another word that's used for hell. It's called Hades, that's a Greek word, Hades. It's used 11 times in uh, biblical translations, 11 times. One time is translated as grave in English. Another 10 times it'll be translated as hell in the scriptures. The third word, which is another Greek word, is Gehenna. It's Greek. It's used 12 times for the lake of fire. I'm gonna say it again. The word Gehenna is used 12 times for the lake of fire. So let's discuss the first one, the first use of the word hell that we discussed. A low state or condition. I'm going, so write this down, low state or condition. I'm going to show you the scriptures that show that. 2 Samuel 22. Many of you coming out of Christian church, when you hear the word hell, first thought in your head is in the middle of the earth, there's a red man with horns and a pitchfork stabbing you. Let me tell you where that comes from. That comes from Dante's Inferno. Dante's Inferno. That's where that foolishness comes from. Okay. It's not in the Bible, though, about a red man in the middle of the earth stabbing you with a fork. It's not in there. What did I say, go? You said uh, 2 Samuel 22. Yes, I want verse, let me look, 6. This is the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 22, and verse 6. The sorrows of hell come past me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. Read and it again. Read it again. Well, I want a six. Verse six. The sorrows of hell come past me about. The sorrows of hell. The sorrows. Of, this is a low state or condition. The sorrows of hell come past me about. The snares of death prevented me. Read verse 7. Verse 7. In my distress. Notice he's talking about his distress. The condition of his mind. In my distress what? I called upon the Lord and cried to my God and he did hear my voice out of his temple. Read verse 1. Just read the first sentence. Verse 1. And David spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all of his enemies. And? And out of the hand of Saul. Now jump down to verse 6 again. Verse 6. The sorrows of hell come past me about. So was King David in the middle of the earth being chased by a red devil with a fork? Pork, pork, point, point, point. No. He was not. He's talking about his condition of his mind. It was like hell. You know when you're going through something real bad, you said, it felt like I was in hell dealing with this situation. Okay, that's what David's making reference to. Give him Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 13. Still dealing with a low state of condition. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 13. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge, and their honorable men are famished, and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory and their multitude and their pomp 
And he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. Y'all see that? Shall descend into it. Into it. So the thought you might, I know some of y'all are new. You go, wait a minute, they descended into hell. Look what he says, verse 13 again. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity. Stop. Verse 14. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself. Stop. The last verse in verse 14, last sentence, is, and he. And he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. What did we descend into? What is the hell we descended into? Slavery. Slavery. Captivity. Some of y'all thought this was good living out here. This is, this is hell. This is captivity. Let's read it again, verse 13 and 14. Let's get the thought. Right? Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 13. Therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Because we have no knowledge of God's laws. That's why we went into slavery. That's why we went into captivity. Go ahead. And their honorable men are famished. All the honorable men of the Israelites, they were famished, meaning they had no understanding of God's laws. Go ahead. And their multitude dried up with thirst. And the multitudes of our people dried up with thirst. Thirst of what? Of God's laws. Not knowing, not applying God's laws. Go ahead. Therefore, hell has enlarged herself. So the hell he's talking about is captivity. Go ahead. And open her mouth without measure. So this state of, of our mind, this condition, has opened her mouth without measure. Go ahead. And their glory, and their multitude, and their pomp. Their pomp is pride, and our pride. Uh huh. And he that rejoices. And the Israelites that even rejoiced at one time. Shall descend into it. We went into slavery. We went into captivity. That's hell. Churches ain't going to show you that. From there, let's get some more. Still dealing with a condition. Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah chapter 28. I want verse 15 through 18. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 28. So you're going to know, oh, my mama died. She going in that. She, she, my mama going to go to hell. You, listen, your mama already in hell. You in hell. We in hell. Come on. Verse 15. Because he have said, we have made a covenant Wait, with... Wait, let's start at 14. I want to start at 14. Verse 14. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men, that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. So now, the Lord is speaking to Isaiah regarding the leadership of the Israelites. Watch what he says concerning the leaders of the Israelites. Go ahead. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death. The word covenant means agreement. We made an agreement with death. Go ahead. And with hell are we at agreement. And with hell are we at agreement. So the leaders, think about the black and Latin leaders today. Our, people, our leadership is not trying to deliver us from this harsh condition our people are in. They are at agreement. Look at all your great black political leaders. They sit in Congress. They run their mouth. They banter back and forth, never having any solutions to change our condition, even the famous President Obama. When did he stand up and try to change the condition of our people? He did not. Why? Because they were at agreement with the condition we live in. That's the prophecy of what's being said here. Read that verse again. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement, when the overflowing scourge shall pass through. When a destruction shall pass through. Go ahead. It shall not come unto us. These leaders think it will not touch them. Why? For we have made lies our refuge. Because they lived their life in lies. Go ahead. And under falsehood have we hid ourselves. And under falsehood have we hid ourselves. They hide themselves under democracy, these black and Latin leaders. They hide themselves under Christianity. And they never try to change the condition wherein our people dwell and live and strive. So they're in agreement with the situations we all live in. They like that thing. Give me Matthew 16 and verse 18. So hell there is talking about the condition, the state of being. This is the book of Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18. And I say also unto thee, thou that art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So the gates of hell, remember, the scriptures refers to the gates as leaders. Okay, like I said, Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. Meaning the leadership. Because when you read in Deuteronomy, the Most High says, Set you up elders to sit at the gates of the land that they may 
judge all situations. So the leadership always sat at the gates of the different lands where Israel dwelt in our cities. So here, Christ is talking about something else, though. Read it again. Verse 18. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock... This rock is referring to himself, Christ, meaning upon Christ. Some people, I hear Catholics always say the church is built on Peter. Y'all don't realize that Peter rejected Christ three times, cursed people out, and said he didn't know Christ? The church was founded upon Christ, not upon Peter. The rock is referring to Christ himself. Read it again. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So the gates of hell that shall not prevail against it is what we just read in Isaiah. About the, uh, remember it said, with death and hell we are at agreement. We've made a covenant with death and hell. You had leaders set up who, watch this, I'm going to prove it to you. Give me John, is 11 verse 47? This is the book of John, chapter 11 and verse 47. Watch the leadership. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees and council and said, What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. Watch this. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. So who were the chief priests and the Pharisees serving? Rome. They were serving Rome. Why were they serving Rome? They made an agreement with death and hell. That's what we just read in Isaiah. Isaiah was prophesying about things to come, which took place during the time of Christ, which has taken place to this day. Look at your black and Latino leaders. They're in agreement with the poverty we live in. They're in agreement with the poor education. For example, which one of these black and Latin lead leaders have changed the school system to stop teaching the lie Christopher Columbus discovered America? Which one of them went to Congress to even debate that thing? Not near one. Not one. When the housing market crashed, and the bank said, oh, we're going under, we're going under. All out of factories. Obama said, hey, bail them out. Bail out the factories, bail out the banks. But what about the black and Latinos that lost their house? Hey, it is what it is. It is what it is. With death and hell are we at agreement. That's the leadership, okay? This is why Christ said, the gates of hell shall not prevail, okay? Yeah, perfect, uh, perfect example, Bishop. You remember that sister that, that was talking about homosexual, how she lose her endorsement? How, you remember that sister? Oh, Kim Burrell, yes. Yeah, to show you that there had been an agreement to the whole society. Soon you talk against it, they take everything they give you. Yep. Look at uh, 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 what happened to Bill Cosby. Exactly. Something happened a long time ago. They want to bring the case against that man. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because they are the leaders of our people. They make agreement with white folks to keep us in the bottom. Perfect example, what happened to New Orleans. You remember what happened to New Orleans? Who that two leaders that sent? Quifo Dollar and TV Jakes. That's not the two black men that sent? They're in agreement with the lie. You understand? To keep their wealth going, man. Exactly. Go to Matthew 23, verse 15. This is verse 15. Woe unto you! Scribes and Pharisees. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Go ahead. Hypocrites. Hypocrites. Do as I say, but not as I do. That's a hypocrite. Do as I say, not as I do. Go ahead. For ye can pass sea and land to make one proselyte. A proselyte is a convert. To make one convert. And when he is... Remember, they were, they were proselytizing Israelites back to the law of Moses. That's what they were doing. To make one proselyte. Go ahead. And when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Why? Because they were training those proselytes, those Israelites, they converted back to the law of Moses to reject Christ. Reject the Son of God. Reject that. He's not the Savior. That's why they were twofold, a child of hell. Okay? And they were in perfect agreement with Rome. That's how they trained those proselytes up, to be in agreement with Rome. Okay? From there. Give me Jonah, the book of Jonah, chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Showing you that hell makes reference, is making reference in this state to a state of mind, state of being, a condition, if you will. This is the book of Jonah, chapter 2 and verse 1. 
Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord. You're in Jonah chapter 2, right? Yes, sir. Right. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord. Lord, his God out of the fish's belly, and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I. So Jonah, remember, he was alive in the fish's stomach. He said, out of hell you have heard me. So what is he, is he talking about the middle of the earth with its fire all around him? No! He's talking about that state of being, that condition, that low state he was in, in that whale, the belly of that big, great fish. He said, this is hell being in here. Okay, give me Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 5. So again, remember when you read the scriptures, you've got to read the words in their cultural context. One word can be talking about different things, like we just showed you with the word heaven. We showed you four different uses for the word heaven, and I'm going to show you different uses for the word hell. What we're dealing with now is a low state or condition of mind. This is the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2 and verse 5. Yea, also, because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home. He's talking about the United States of America, called Babylon the Great. He is a proud man, neither keepeth at home. Why? Because his militaries are everywhere throughout the earth. Go ahead. Who enlargeth his desire as hell. Who enlargeth his desire as hell. Meaning wherever this man go, he sets down his embassies, his military, those areas are turned to a hellish condition. Read that part again. Yea, also, because he transgresses by wine. Meaning philosophy. That's what the wine is referring to their political agendas. Go ahead. He is a proud man. He is a proud man. Neither keepeth at home. He doesn't stay here in the United States. He, his military goes everywhere. Go ahead. Who enlarges his desire as hell. Who enlarges his desire as hell. Go ahead. And is as death. And is as death. This is very similar to what we read in um, Isaiah. Yes, Isaiah 28. What verse you at? I'm at uh, Habakkuk 2 and 5. Go ahead. And cannot be satisfied. And this man cannot be satisfied. Go ahead. But gathereth unto him all nations. This is the proof it's talking about America. But gathereth unto him all nations. Go ahead. And heapeth unto him all people. And heapeth unto him all. That's the great melting pot. Go ahead. Verse 6. Oh, that was it. That's all I wanted out of that. Give me. Let's go back to Isaiah 14 and verse 9. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 9. Nine. Remember, we were reading this earlier about the golden city, Babylon. Okay? Also called Lucifer. Watch what it says in verse 9. Verse 9. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. Let's see what this hell is talking about. Hell from beneath. Look what it says. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. So, Babylon is coming down. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. Meet thee at thy coming down. Watch what it says. It stirreth up the dead for thee. So the dead are in hell. Let's see what it's talking about. Even all the chief ones of the earth. And the word even means indeed. Indeed all the chief ones of the earth. Wait a minute. So who are the chief ones of the earth that are the dead that is stirred up? Go ahead. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. You see who the dead are? The kings of the nations. The kings of the nation are the chief ones of the earth. The kings of the earth are the dead that it's stirred up. The kings of the earth is the hell that is making reference to. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirs up the dead for thee. See in your mind, you probably got a, what's the name of that movie that people be watching? That Walking Dead. But no, <laughs> there's no such thing as zombies really, not in that context. So the hell that is moved for Babylon to meet Babylon at their coming down are the nations. The nations are the dead. Why? Because when America comes, they shut all nations down. They put their agenda in place. And these nations that were at one time, at one time ruling, now they're, in, they're submissive under the United States of America. Verse 9, one more time. Verse 9. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, 
even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. So the kings of the nations are the chief ones. The kings of the earth are the dead. The kings of the earth are the hell that's being spoken of here in verse 9. That's why we, I took you through Hosea 12 and 10 about the prophets will use similar to, speak with visions and similar tunes. We also read in Psalm 78 the prophecy is that the prophets would use parables when they speak. So that's why I said you could have one word being made reference of different things. Read it in this cultural context. Now, so the three things hell makes reference to is a low state of condition. The grave and fire. Let's talk about the grave for a moment. Everybody knows about the grave. Give me Psalm 16 and verse 10. Psalm 16 and verse 10. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 16 and verse 10. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. This is all talking about Christ. Go ahead. Neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Neither will you suffer or allow your holy one to see corruption. So the hell that Christ was in was talking about the grave. Write that down. The grave. Why was Christ not allowed to stay there? Because he resurrected. He was resurrected from the grave. Everybody with me so far? All right, give me Amos chapter 9 and verse 1 and 2. So I'm talking about the grave now. How hell can be used talking about the grave, the literal grave. This is the book of Amos, chapter 9 and verse 1. I saw the Lord standing upon the altar, and he said, Smite the lintel of the door, that the post may shake, and cut them in the head, all of them. And I will slay the last of them with the sword. He that fleeth of them shall not flee away. And he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. He's talking about destruction coming upon the earth. That's what he's making reference to. So watch what he says. Though they dig into hell, then shall mine hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down. So see that part where it says, though they dig into hell? Remember, America has something called what? Underground bunkers. That's in the earth. In the earth. So the Lord said, though they dig into hell, then shall my hand take them up. Just saw the movie X-Men? Remember when Magneto was looking for the president? And he says, he says, you're in here somewhere. He was waving, and there was a big bunker under the ground. He said, ah, oh, there you go. And he pulled it up from the earth. That's what this is talking about. Though they dig into hell, then shall my hand take them. Okay? So the, the hell is talking about is... The earth, grave, the grave, like meaning the literal soil. That's where we're at. From there, let's go to fire. Let me talk about fire. Let's go to Luke 16. Luke. I'm going to talk about fire. World War Three, the second coming of the Lord. So, so far we've discussed a low state of condition regarding hell. We've also discussed the earth being made reference to hell or the grave, the earth or the grave, the soil. Now we're going to talk about fire. Luke 16 and verse 19 to 31. We're going to read down. This is the book of Luke, chapter 16 and verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen. Uh -huh. And fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. So now, this rich man, let's go to what I'm about to say, right? This, now, this is a parable Christ is giving. There was a certain rich man. This rich man represents the Pharisees, the leadership of Israel. How do we know that? Remember what we read in John 11. It says, if we leave him thus alone, the Romans will come and take away both our what? Our place, meaning they what? What does it mean by place? Their place in society. They were the big dogs, okay? Look at your thing, just think. Nothing has changed from then till now. Look at the black and Latin leaders now that you see on TV. They're the big dogs. Anytime something go down, Esau goes to them. They don't go to us. They say, no, let's call our dog. Let's call our henchmen. <laughs> we, get, we pay these guys for that. We pay Creflo, we pay TD, 
Yeah. We play. What's the dude in uh, Congress? What's his name? He was doing the civil mo civil rights movement. I forgot his name. This has got a bald head now, huh? John Lewis. John Lewis. John Lewis, right? Okay, so he's another one. You got Maxine. Well, I like Maxine Waters, but she's another one. You have uh, uh, Barbara Barzell. Barzell. She worked under the Clintons. But there's a lot of black leaders that are in Congress, okay? Or, you know, political analysts and things like that. They pay them the big dollars. They have um, med uh, health care for life. For life. Free. <laughs> so read that again. Luke 16, 19, please. Luke chapter 16 and verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen. And fared sumptuously every day. Uh -huh. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Write this down. Lazarus is a similitude for the followers of Christ, the elect of Israel. That's what these parables are talking about. Go ahead. Which was laid at his gate, full of sores, mm -hmm. and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. And desiring, now notice it says in verse 30, I mean 20. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate. Remember said we were reading about the gates earlier? Because why? Find me that scripture in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 16 and verse 18. Judges and officers shalt thou make thee in all thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee throughout thy tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. Right, so at the gates... With all the cities of Israel, remember we were divided into 12 coasts, okay? And we had judges that sat at the gates, meaning the openings to the cities. The leadership chilled out there, and if there was a problem, you went to the gates. At the gates, you had the leaders, the elders of Israel, if you had a problem. Watch this, give me Jeremiah 14 too. This is what I made reference to earlier, so we have a better understanding of what it's talking about. Jeremiah chapter 14 and verse 2. Judah morning. And the gates thereof language. So the gates that language is not talking about the not talking about literal gates. It's talking about the leadership that sat at the opening of the cities. Like when you drive in, it'll say, "Welcome, you're entering Tallahassee" or something like that. That's the gate of the city. Okay, everybody understand what I'm saying? Sure. Now, give me the one in Matthew about what we read. The gates of hell. We read that a few minutes ago. You know what I'm talking about? 16, 18, I think it was. Yep, 16, I'm just talking 18. about the gates for a second so y'all can see the use of the word. That's why I said you got to use these words and then keep the words in their cultural context. Deuteronomy 16, 18 gives us the cultural context of the uses of the word gate. That's where the judges and the officers chilled out. That's where they sat. Read that. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock... I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So the gates of hell was the leadership that was set up, the wicked leadership. They were the gates of hell. Remember we read earlier, it says, we have made uh, a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. That's what was going on. So now let's go back to where we were at in Luke, chapter Luke. 16. Now we have our thought pattern together again. Luke chapter 16, verse 20. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, full of souls. So now we know why Lazarus was at the gate. He was a poor man. He knew he wanted help. He went to the leadership of Israel. That's why he went to the gate. Go ahead. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Uh huh. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. The dogs that came and licked his sores, talking about the nations. How do we know that? Give me that precept in Exodus, I think. Exodus 11 and 7. Yeah, Exodus 11 and 7. Thank you. This is reference to the dogs. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 11 and verse 7. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and and Israel. So the dogs, he was making reference to, were the Egyptians. Let not the Egyptians speak against the Israelites, neither man nor beast. So the dogs back in Exodus was talking about the Egyptians. So here in Luke, these dogs are referring to the other nations. Okay? 
Let's go back to Luke now. Luke chapter 16, verse 21. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Just like, think about it today. Think about it. Does society give us the best of wealth today, or do we get the crumbs of society? We get the crumbs. We are Lazarus begging for crumbs that fall from the rich man's table. Okay, the rich man in the context are the black leaders of Israel, our people. Can y'all give us something? Give us a little something? Look, you got free health care. You live in the best homes, the best houses. You are wealthy beyond belief. Can y'all help us out a little bit? We want, give us a crumb. Go ahead. That's why we get welfare, public assistance. These are crumbs. Go ahead. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And not only that, the nations came and lick our sores. I'm going to give an example of that. I'm going to give an example. What does it mean? We have little black neighborhoods. I, I, I heard a brother say it was funny. He said, we don't have communities. He said, we got neighborhoods. <laughs> In our neighborhoods, you'll have Chinese stores. They come, they sell you Chinese food, and they use the, money, the little money you got to take it back to China and build up wealth over there, or Chinatown, like in New York, we got Chinatown. You got the Italian, you got Little Italy, okay? The nations come and set up shop, sell you little knickknacks, and then use the money, not to uh, give back a portion to, the, to our neighborhoods, but to take it and build up their own wealth. That's what they do. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Go ahead. Yeah, Bishop. Yet to prove that, because these black leaders that are in Congress, they should uh, they should uh, fight for us to so they can give us fun. We can open our own corner store. Exactly. No, they didn't fight for us. The other nations can. They give them the fun instead of us, our own community. They don't give us the fun. Exactly. The Chinese come. They vote for their fun. They get their fun. But us, they don't give us nothing. So the people that we looking up to, who supposed to be there for us. They'll look at you like, nigga, you ain't your own. Exactly. I got mine. You ain't your own, nigga. That's right. That's what they do. Like, for example, when you want to go to the bank, they'll check your what? Your credit line or your credits. Let's see what your credit's like. When the Chinese, the East Indians come to Arabs, they get what's called federal grants. <laughs> Nobody, they don't need a credit score. The government gives them grants and free programs to learn, to learn the culture of the neighborhood they're going to set up in to open a business. What to do, how to speak the language, like yeah. with, over in uh, Miami. They got a little Chinese store, and people speak Spanish. The Chinese speak Spanish over there, OK? I remember I went to a Chinese store in uh, Brooklyn, and uh, me and my wife was, we, this was a while ago, we was in there talking. It was a line. Then I heard somebody say, how you doing, baby? What you want? I look around, there's a Chinese lady said that. I was what, the, what did you say? She said, how you doing? What you want? I was shocked. I said, what the hell is this? But they study us. They study us. And government gives them grants. Another one is in uh, Spanish home. They speak perfect Spanish. It's perfect. I'm like, wow. And then I found out later on in time that the government gives them these things to help them open up businesses. But they don't do that with us. That's my point. We don't. Verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died. Lazarus died. Go ahead. The elect died. Go ahead. And was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. This is how we know it's the elect. So the angels carried him away into Abraham's bosom, meaning Abraham's promises, the promises given to Abraham. Go ahead. The rich man also died and was buried. The rich man also died and was buried. Watch this. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in Lazarus in his bosom. Notice, and in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Whoa! Now that's the heavy stuff right there. What is that talking about? Hmm. This is talking about destruction. I'm going to show you that in a few minutes. Go ahead. Verse 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in, in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. The key you want out of this is flame, fire, okay? Because I'm showing you the third context of hell is making reference to fire. Go ahead. Verse 25. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Let me show you something about the rich. 
Give me a precept for the rich. Give me 1 Timothy 6 and 17, I think it is. Give me that. I'm going to show you about the rich of Israel, of our own people. Watch what the Lord says about them. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 17. <laughs> Charge them that are rich in this world uh -huh. that they be not high-minded. That they be not high-minded. Go ahead. Nor trust in uncertain riches. Nor trust in uncertain riches. Because why? Riches can be here today, gone tomorrow. Go ahead. But in the living God. But trust in the living God. Go ahead. Who giveth us richly all things uh, to enjoy. Go ahead. That they do good. That the rich may do good. Go ahead. That they be rich in good works. That the rich may be rich in good works. Ready to distribute. See that? Ready to distribute. Meaning help your brothers, help your sisters. Go ahead. Willing to communicate. Willing to communicate. Now, so when we go back to Luke, it's helping us now understand this rich man. Okay? Watch this. What verse was you at? 25 again. Verse 25. But Abraham said, Son, remember thou in thy lifetime. Receive thy good things. And likewise, Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Why? Because this rich Israelite trusted in uncertain riches. Okay. He hated his own people. He was very disrespectful. Go ahead. Verse 26. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fix. So Abraham says, between us and you, there's a great gulf fix. Go ahead. So that they which would pass from hence... To you cannot. We can't pass from you, from here to you, nor vice versa. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Watch this. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send no, him. No, no. Let's read again. I'm sorry. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. Uh -huh. For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. So remember, I'm going to show you what this torment is, this fire which is torment. I'm going to show you what it is. Go ahead. Verse 29. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. You know why verse 29 is important? Because some Israelites say that the rich man is talking about Edomites. Was Moses and the prophets given to Esau? No. Moses and the prophets was given only to the Israelites. Read that again from 29. Verse 29. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went up to them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded Though one rose from the dead. You see that? So Christ said, if they won't even hear Moses and the prophets, they will not believe though anyone raised from the dead. Let me show you how that. Give me John 5, the last two verses I believe it is. This is the book of John, chapter 5 and verse 46. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings... How shall ye believe my words? Now watch this. Give me the one where Lazarus was raised from the dead, the literal Lazarus. This is the book of John, chapter 12 and verse 9. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there. And they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had risen from the dead. Who he had raised from the dead. Raised from the dead. Go ahead. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. Y'all see that? See what they want to do? They said, let's kill Lazarus again. Go ahead. <laughs> because that by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel. So what I wanted y'all to see is that when Lazarus was literally raised from the dead, this particular Lazarus that we read, the chief priest wanted to kill him. They said, let's kill him. 
So this goes back to the parable. Go back to Luke 16 now. Verse 30 and 30, no, 29 to 31. Again, I need y'all to see it. Luke chapter 16, verse 29. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Can Esau repent? No. So this parable is not about Edomites. I keep hearing brothers break this down and this is about Edomites, and it's not talking about Edomites. Repentance was, oh, give me that, the word who repentance is for the next five. They say, yeah, the rich man is Esau. So you're saying Esau can repent. Read that. You got to Acts 5. It might be verse 31. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 5 and verse 31. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. So the rich man in this parable is Israel. Repentance was given to him, but he didn't want it. Now that he gets put to death. Now he, oh, my brother sent somebody to them so that way they'll repent. No. Father Abraham said they won't repent. If they reject Moses and the prophets, they're not going to repent even if somebody was raised from the dead. Why? Because they got that hard, rebellious heart. So, this is the parable. Listen good to you brothers that teach on the street. This is the parable where everyone bases the understanding that, or the thought, that in the middle of the earth, there's a fire, and there's a red man that sticks you with a fork. That's more in detail on Dante's Inferno. I think Tom Hanks did a movie called, uh, what is it called? I can't hear you. The Inferno. It's one of those Illuminati films that just came out a while ago. It's about Dante's Inferno. It's a series, right? So, let me show you about this fire, about the Lord's vengeance upon those that believe not the gospel of Jesus Christ. So now here in Isaiah 34, Isaiah is talking about the same exact thing. Read that again. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompense. The word recompense means judgments or paybacks. Now it's time to pay you back. Now it's time to judge you. Go ahead. For the controversy of Zion. There's a controversy of Zion. Who are the Israelites? Who does the land belong to? Go ahead. Verse 9. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch. And the dust thereof into brimstone. This is the destruction. Go ahead. And the land thereof shall become burning pitch. See that? And the land thereof shall become burning pitch. Go ahead. Verse 10. It shall not be quenched night nor day. Did we just read, read that in Mark 9? Go ahead. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. From generation to generation it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. This is talking about Babylon over here. When this place is destroyed, it says the fire shall go up from generation to generation. It says uh, it shall not be quenched day nor night. The smoke thereof shall go up forever from generation to generation. This is why, go back to Isaiah 66, the last two verses again. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 23. And it shall come to pass. That from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Watch this. Go ahead. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worms shall not die. So when it says, we shall go forth and look upon their carcasses, I mean, we're going to look. And we're going to see the smoke of Babylon, which goes up for how long? Forever. That's what it's talking about. Daddy, what's that over there? That's Babylon. That's where all the rebellious Israelites over there was put to death. Okay? That's all that's talking about. We're going to look upon that car because we're going to see the land that go where the smoke goes up forever and ever. And remember that thing. Watch this. Give me um, Isaiah 13, 19. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 13 and verse 19. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms. America. This is talking about America. This is the most glory. You are not going to find a greater country on earth than the United States of America right now. I don't care where you go. All y'all from the whole my island is so beautiful than what you're here for. <laughs> this is the most glory. The Lord is telling this is the most glorious kingdom on earth right now. Go ahead. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees. Mm -hmm. 
excellency shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. This place is going to be the way God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. How was Sodom and Gomorrah overthrown? Fire By fire, fire, brimstone and fire. So the Lord is saying that's how this place is going to be. Some Christian uh, commentaries say, uh, well, we know that Babylon is uh, modern-day Iraq. Modern-day Iraq was not overthrown the way Sodom and Gomorrah was. Iraq was over when it was Babylon, it was overthrown by the Persian Mede Empire. The Persians and Medes took the land. Okay? It was not overthrown by fire, thermonuclear fire. So what we're reading here in Isaiah, where are we at? Isaiah chapter 13, 13 and verse 19. Read that again. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Go ahead. Verse 20. It shall never be inhabited. Neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. So now some Christian commentators say that that's Iraq. Are people living over there in Iraq? You better believe it. So that is what this is talking about. Don't believe the hype. <laughs> Go ahead. It shall never be inhabited. Neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there. And guess what? Ancient Babylon was uh, ruled by the Cushites, the Ethiopians. This is talking about neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there. You got Arabs running all through America setting up stores. Talking about assalamu alaikum, wa alaikum salam and all that. Go ahead. Neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. Go ahead. But wild beasts of the desert shall lie there. And their houses shall be full of doleful creatures. And owls shall dwell there, and satyrs shall dance there, and the wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate houses, and dragons in their pleasant palaces. When it talks about dragons, talk about those in a lizard family, like snakes, lizards, things of that nature. Go ahead. And her time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. Now watch this. Watch this. Go to Revelation 18. Show us going to say the same exact thing. Revelation 18, let's start at verse 1. We're going to read 1 down. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 18, and verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the inhabitation of of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Where did we just read that? Where did we just read that? Everybody forgot already? Yes, young man back there. Isaiah uh, 13. Exactly. Isaiah 13. We just read the same thing about Babylon falling. Then it says, and it's become the habitation of devils. Remember we read about the satyrs and the dragons of the wilderness? It's talking about the unclean animals that's going to be left there. Okay? The habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Okay? Jump down to verse 8. Verse 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. That's what we just read in Isaiah 13. That's what we read in Isaiah 34. That's what we read in Isaiah 66. Go ahead. That's verse what we read in 2 Peter 3 about that fire. Read that again, verse 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God, who judges her. Go ahead. Verse 9. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. See that part? When they shall see the smoke of her burning. We just read something very similar. Give me that. Give me, go back to, I think it was, who knows where it was. Was it Isaiah 13? Where was it? Where it says, uh, the smoke shall go from generation to generation. I want that one. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 10. That's it. It shall not be quenched, 
night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever from generation to generation. It shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. Now go to Isaiah 66 about the righteous. When the righteous look upon it. Go ahead. Isaiah chapter 66 the last verse. and verse 24. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. Now let's go to Revelation 18. Now in Revelation 18 and verse 9 is talking about the kings of the earth. Revelations 18 verse 9. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her. The fornication is their political policies that they have joined in. Go ahead. Shall be well her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. When they shall see the smoke of her burning. Read. Stand, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. For in one hour is thy judgment come. Now let's go back to 2 Peter so we don't forget the thought. 2 Peter 3 and 10 to 12. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, and the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Watch this. Go to, Re go to Revelation 6. In verse 14. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 6 and verse 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll, when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their place. Read it again. Verse 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll. When it says the heaven departed as a scroll, that's that mushroom cloud. When a bomb drops, it looks like the scroll effect, they call it. Okay? Read it again. And the heaven departed as a scroll. When it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their place. So nobody's going to escape. Puerto Rico's not going to escape. Jamaica, Haiti, Santo Domingo. All you from the islands, you will not escape either. Watch this. Revelation 14, 8 through 11. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 8. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen. Is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. She made all nations drink of her political policies. That's why last week we went over how America sends foreign aid to all countries on the earth. Okay? They enter into buying and selling and trade with these countries. Go ahead. Verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image. If any man worship the beast, that's America, and his image, that's the Christian church image of Jesus Christ. And receive his mark in his forehead. Re receive their policies in their forehead, their philosophies. Go ahead. Or in his hand. Meaning you support their policies, their philosophies. Go ahead. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. That's Christ. Go ahead. Verse 11. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. Wait a minute. Where did we just read that? The smoke of their torment shall ascend up forever and ever. That was Isaiah 34 and 10. Go right back now. I'm showing you how these things is all connected. Isaiah 34 and 10. Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 10. It shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever from generation to generation. Now let's go right back to Revelation 14. Now we see something in Revelation 14 and 10. 
Revelations. I'm sorry, 14 and 11. Revelations chapter 14 and verse 11. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image. And whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. That's going into their policies, their philosophies. From there, watch this. Give me Revelation 20. Actually, before I go to Revelation 20, give me, just popped in my mind, give me Daniel 12. Uh, what verse is it? About uh, some shall awake to life. Mm -hmm. I got you. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 12, and start at 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth Meaning shall... have died. When it says sleep there, I'm referring to have died. Go ahead. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. You see that shame and everlasting contempt? This is going into this. Give me uh, the precept for that in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. About that they all might be damned. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 10. Let me look at it. Let me look at it. Let me see if I want to start there. I might want to start above it. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Started, started nine. Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse nine. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. Guess what? This him here is talking about Esau. Let me give you another word that we've been reading today: Babylon. I'm gonna say it again. The him there is Esau. Is Babylon? Read it again. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. With all power. If you don't think it's talking about America, find me a more powerful nation than America. What nation got this powerful with nuclear armaments? What nation is doing all the space travels that America is doing? What nation has the science America has? No other nation can match this place. That's what it's talking about. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. Go ahead. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. With all power and signs. And lying wonders. Because all these things that we see are lying wonders. Their wonders are put forth to turn us from the truth. This is why some of our people say, no, no, no. The white man, if there's a guy, he has to be white. Look at all the things they can do. Y'all can't do that. Y'all ain't got what they got. A lot of our people turn from his truth believing the white man is God. Go ahead. Even him. I'm sorry, verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. Y'all see that word, deceivableness? That's why I'm going to go through it slow. The word deceivableness means deceit. And with all deceit, go ahead. Of unrighteousness. Another word for unrighteousness is sin. Another term for sin is breaking what? God's, God's laws. laws. And with all deceit of breaking God's laws, go ahead. And them that perish. And them that perish. Why? Because they receive not the love of the truth. That they might be saved. That they might be saved. Go ahead. Verse 11. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Right. Because they're so rebellious, the Lord's going to allow them to go off into that thought that they believe lies. Go ahead. That they all might be damned. Now see that? That they all might be, see that word? Damned. They're damned. That goes back with everlasting contempt that we read, we read in Daniel 12 and 2. That everlasting shame and contempt is being damned. Read that part again, verse 12. Verse 12. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So this damning goes back with them being cast into the lake of fire. That lake of fire is that thermonuclear fire that's going to hit this place in Revelation 18. Isaiah 34, Isaiah 13, 2 Peter 3. We've been reading it all day. Okay? That's what it's talking about. So, Revelation, give me, no, no, before I get there, give me Isaiah 54 and 16, I think it is. 
This is the book of Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 16. Uh -huh. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. Read that again. Verse 16. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire. So in ancient days, there was a man called a smith. He created weapons. He made swords, lances, arrows. He used fire to melt down the irons, the tins, the aluminums, okay, to make these weapons. But in Isaiah, what he's talking about there is talking about scientists. As we read the whole verse in its cultural context, you'll see it's talking about scientists. Read it again. Verse 16, Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire. Uh, let's see what they're going to make. Go ahead. And that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. That bringeth forth an instrument for his work. Let's see what this instrument is called. And I, it, let's see what it does, rather. Go ahead. And I have created the waster to destroy. This instrument is called a waster. Why? Because it lays waste to the land. That's not talking about an arrow, neither a sword. That's talking about a bomb. That's the waster, okay? Give me, you know the one I want about God opened his armory? It's in Jeremiah, I believe. Yes, yeah, around Jeremiah 50, somewhere in there. Give me that. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, verse 25. The Lord had opened his armory uh -huh. and had brought forth the weapons of his indignation. Mm. For this is the work of the Lord God of hosts in the land of the Chaldeans. Y'all see that? The Lord has opened his armory. An armory is a place where you have weapons. The weapons he's talking about here is not swords, daggers, or arrows, or javelins, or spears. This is talking about weapons, meaning major weapons, like bombs, ICBMs. Read it again. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, verse 25. The Lord hath opened his armory and hath brought forth the weapons of his indignation. For this is the work of the Lord God of hosts and the land of the Chaldeans. Now watch this, watch this. Give me Psalms 91. Psalms. Yes, yeah, Psalms 91. Psalms chapter 91 and verse 1. Uh -huh. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So let's explain the secret place. What is the secret place? The secret place is the Bible. How do we know that? Give me that precept in Amos about surely the Lord God will do nothing. Amos 3. Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. That's how we know the secret place of the Lord is talking about his scriptures, his word. Because the prophets get their understanding from the scriptures. Okay? Like it says in, uh, is it Daniel? This is Daniel chapter 9 and verse 2. In the first year... Of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books. You see that? The books he's talking about is the scriptures, the holy scriptures. So what he understood by books? Go ahead. What did he understand? The number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, the prophet. You see that? Was that the whole verse? No, sir. Go ahead. That he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. So that's how Daniel understood that they would be in Babylon for 70 years. He understood the scriptures which was recorded in books. So now when we go back to where we were at in Psalms 91. Psalms chapter 91 verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. See that? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. So we got to dwell in this Bible. Stay in the book. That's what it's saying. Right? Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Meaning you shall abide under the protection of the Most High God. Right? Verse 2. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, uh -huh. my God, and him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler uh -huh. and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. Uh -huh. 
His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. So God's word shall be your protection, your shield and buckler. Go ahead. Thou shalt not be afraid for the tower by night. Watch this. Nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Now, this arrow is not literally talking about a regular arrow. Ain't nobody scared of it. You just move out the way. This is an arrow that flies that you cannot escape. Read that part again. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Uh-huh. Nor for the arrow that flies by day. Let's see what it does. Read. Verse 6. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Here it comes. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. The prophecy is telling you when the destruction is going to come to Babylon at noonday. The Bible is telling us the destruction will be at noonday. <laughs> and it's telling us brought forth by an arrow. That arrow is not a literal arrow. It's an ICBM missile. That's what it's talking about. Go ahead. Verse 7. A thousand shall fall at thy side, uh -huh. and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. You know why I wanted that right there? I'm going to show you why I wanted that right there. Only with your eyes shall you see the reward of the wicked. The reward of the wicked is what? Destruction. Fire. Now, go back to Luke 16. Y'all thought we forgot? You thought we left that alone? Oh, no. Luke 16. We want 22 and 23. Luke chapter 16 and verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Why? Because the angels protected him. It said, a thousand shall fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand. But it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you behold. What did it say? The reward of the wicked. Go ahead. The rich man also died. The rich man also died. 1,000 at one side, 10,000 at your other. Go ahead. And was buried. Go ahead. Buried. Go ahead. And in hell. This hell is talking about fire. Go ahead. He lift up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Go ahead. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Now, you know he ain't literally going to be talking. Hey, can somebody remember some more? Ain't talk about that. Just talk about that destruction. Boom! When it comes, you're going to see what's going to happen to the wicked. You're going to see them, they're going to see you. <laughs> That's all this parable is talking about. It's not talking about you having a conversation with the dead. Hey, way over there. No, it's not talking about that. The destruction that wasteth at noonday. That's what it's going into. Okay? And the smoke of the fire here, because this is the place where it's going to hit, it shall go up for how long, brothers? Forever. Forever. From generation to generation. That's what it's talking about. Watch this. Give me um, Ezekiel. So somebody might ask the question, well, how do we escape this thing? Well, we just, we just read how to escape the fire. Let me see who's thinking. We just read... How to escape the fire in Psalms 91. What was the solution to escaping the fire, the coming fire, the destruction that wastes at noonday? Yes? Uh, secret place of the Most High, which is the scriptures. Right. Dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Stay in this book. That's how you escape the fire. But now, how do you escape the con this condition we live in? Ezekiel 14. Let me show you all this. Now, before I get that, I'll get to the quicker ones first. The grave. No, 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 I'll do condition, I'll do condition. This hellish condition we live in, Ezekiel 14 and 12. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 14 and verse 12. Now, so, I want y'all to remember, remember, with hell, there were three references for hell. Three words that was used. You had the Hebrew word sheol, because some of you might want to sit and read Strong's Concordance. That's fine, you can go through all that. Three words was used, sheol, Hades, and Gehenna. Okay, those Words is interchangeable. Okay. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 14, verse 12. The word of the Lord came again to me, saying, Son of man, when the Lord sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out my hand upon it, and will break the staff of the bread thereof, and will send famine upon it. And so it's talking, remember, this is another hellish condition. Watch. Talking about famine, go ahead. 
and will cut off man and beast from it. Why? Because of the famine. It's about a condition of us breaking God's laws. We will enter into these conditions of famine, for example. Go ahead. Verse 14. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it. The it. See, it's as though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it. In what? The famine that you read in the verse above. I will break the staff of the bread thereof and will send famine upon it and will cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, go ahead, were in it, they should deliver but their own soul. How? By their righteousness, saith the Lord God. By their righteousness, saith the Lord God. Now, there are a few precepts for righteousness. Give me uh, Deuteronomy 6.25. Some people think righteousness is going to church every Sunday, celebrating Christmas and Easter. They think that's righteousness. That's not righteousness. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 25. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God. Y'all see and, that? Was that it? As he had commanded us. So the righteousness is keeping the commandments. That's the righteousness. Now... How many categories of law are there? Give me your name. Um, Brother Jason. Brother Jason. Give me the groups of law. Um, there's um, ceremonial. Ceremonial. There's, um, there's um, law sacrifice. There's sacrificial law. Does anybody else know? You want to give him a hand? Let me hear this brother right here. You. Have a seat. You have a seat. I went to five categories of law. Raphael. Brother Raphael? Raphael. 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 Sacrificial law. Sacrificial law. Ceremonial law. Ceremonial law. Moral law. Moral law. Dietary law. Dietary law. And civil law. And civil law. Very good. Very good. Which one of those laws was done away with? Sacrificial. Sacrificial law. So now let's read Romans 10 and 4 again. Romans chapter 10 and verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law. Christ is the end of the law. What law? The law of sacrifice. The sacrificial law. Go ahead. For righteousness to everyone that believeth. Right, because it was Christ's sacrifice that brings us into the good graces of the Most High. By us accepting his sacrifice. Not the sacrifice of uh, bulls and goats, but of Christ. For Christ is the end of the law. So that law that ended was the law of animal sacrifice. For righteousness to everyone that believeth. Meaning to every Israelite that believeth. Okay. We know they talk about the moral law. Where it says thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. We know they talk about that. Okay. So. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. So, in, in, so we got to add to Deuteronomy 6.25. Romans 10 and 4. we got to add Christ into it. Because you have some Israelites that will go, yeah, Deuteronomy 6.25, we just keep the commandments. But you got to believe in Christ too. Remember, Christ said, no man comes unto the Father but by me. Okay? Watch this. Yes? Uh, does that go with Revelation 14.12? What does it say? Read it to me. Um, there is the patience of the things where they that keep the commandments of God and the very, 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 Just read that. Revelation 14.12. Very good. Very good precept. I like that. This is, the, oh, okay. this is the book of Revelations, chapter 14 and verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Right, so that's good. That's a good precept. You need those two parts, the commandments and the faith of Christ. You need it. That's the righteousness. That's what Romans 10 and 4 is saying. In conjunction with uh, Deuteronomy 6.25. Say the same thing. You see that? You have to believe that. But your Christians, mothers and fathers, they don't believe in Christ. So why would they believe Christ in the laws of sacrifice? You still have to keep the law. They would not believe that. You understand? That's what the Lord said. Those who believe. You have to believe that Christ in the laws of sacrifice. Now it's to him. We're able to live the life of righteousness to him. To his blood. You understand? They have to believe. They don't believe that. Exactly. From there, let's go back to Ezekiel 14 we were at. And we were in what verse? 12. We read 
We read 12 through 14 already. So we're in 15. 15. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 15. Watch it. Now, we're, we're still discussing hell in the context of uh, a condition, okay, and how to escape it. Go ahead. If I cause noisome beasts to pass through the land, and they spoil it, so that it be desolate, that no man may pass through because of the beast. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters. They only shall be delivered, but the land shall be desolate. Yeah, see that? Verse 16 is heavy point. The three men he's talking about goes back to verse 14. Read verse 14 again. Verse 14. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. Now verse 16. 16. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters. You know why I wanted that? Because some of us believe we can deliver our sons and daughters. We all love our children, but guess what? You cannot save them. All these little cute kids running around up in here, they're all cute, but guess what? There's going to come a time where they have to decide if they're going to keep following this Bible or not. Kids do it now because we tell them, do this and do that. But when they get to around the age of 20, let's start, let me, I'd be before that, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. You're going to start to see change. You'll see the world start to weigh on a lot of them, Okay. Does someone want to go back? Start smoking weed. Start smoking weed. Go to clubs. Watch. Yeah. You're going to see. You're going to, all you brothers and you sisters that's so diligent. We're going to see if you're able to apply if your right hand offend you. Cut it off. We're going to see if your right eye offend you. Pluck it out. <laughs> We're going to see. We've seen people turn from the truth. Adults. No, oh, no, no, not my baby. Okay. You're going to be proven on that day. All our kids is cute. Zeph got some cute kids. He got some cute kids. You got some cute kids. Mm -hmm. Everybody got cute kids. As you can ask me, ask Bishop Kenai what happened when they start growing up. My son out there on the street reading. Then he sees a girl with the big butt. He's like, uh, 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 hey, 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 yo, girl, come here. These things happen. They go to college, trade school, wherever you're going to send them. They meet homeboy, homegirl. Home hey, let's go smoke some weed. Let's go do a little bit. Come on in. That ain't going to hurt you. You're going to see they gonna, if they're going to stand on the word of the Most High. I'm talking about all the little cute kids up in here, all of them. Let's read on, though. So you'll just marinate on that. You let it go through your mind. Verse Come 17. On. Or if I bring a sword upon that land and say, sword, go through the land. So that I cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered themselves. You can only save yourself. You can't save your kids. We cannot save our children. That's what the Bible is letting us know. Go ahead. Verse 19. Or if I send a pestilence into that land, and pour out my fury upon it in blood, to cut off from it man and beast. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own soul by their righteousness. This is a cold deal. We got to know what this truth is really about. Everybody is not going to be saved. Who knows what that scripture is in Ezra? About few shall be saved. You know what that one is? Second Ezra 8 3. Read that. I want y'all to see it. Because some of y'all, y'all got the Christian mentality, some of you. Everybody's going to be saved and it's going to be wonderful and good and we're all going to make it. No. <laughs> this is the book of Second Ezra, chapter 8 and verse 3. There be many created, but few shall be saved. Y'all see that? Few shall be saved. Few. All your kids ain't gonna make it. Remember the scriptures say two-thirds of Israel shall what? Be cut off and die. Two-thirds. Some of them two-thirds might be of our children. Let's go back to Ezekiel 14. That's a cold deal right there, what I just said. 
That's a harsh reality. Reality check. Ezekiel chapter 14 and verse 20. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. Go ahead. See that? Deliver your own souls by their righteousness. Go ahead. For thus saith the Lord God, how much more when I send my four sore judgments upon Jerusalem, the sore and the famine and the noisome beast and the pestilence to cut off from it man and beast. Yet behold, therein shall be left a remnant that shall be brought forth. See that the remnant of those who are saved by their own righteousness. That's right. That's it. That don't include your sons and daughters. They got to do it by their own righteousness. Not because mommy and daddy forced me to do it. Because they love to do it. They believe in this. What are you going to say, Rob? The perfect example was uh, <laughs> uh, Prophet Jeremiah. You remember? When Babylon came and conquered the land, mm -hmm. he was in the dung hill. Yet he was well protected by the chief. Said, uh, either you want to stay here or you can come to Babylon with us. We'll give you a good place to stay. But what happened to the wicked? They all were destroyed. The Lord wants you to know that uh, if you want to be under his shield, you have to keep their commandment. If you don't want to be under his shield, whatever's going to happen in America, you will be a part of it. That's what he wants you to understand. Either it's going to happen while you're up in here, for some reason, uh, uh, the spirit God, you say, you know what? You better go to class. There's about to be something going to happen in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Now you sit there, you be rebellion, that thing going to happen to you and being wicked. That's what the Lord said. The law is the only protection in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord already tell you that. It's the same thing when you went to uh, 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 yeah, the Luke. I'm sitting there, man. I'm telling, like, it's the same thing Father Abraham tell the simple dude. Uh -huh. We got the laws in the prophet. Listen to the listen to the law, brother. Right. They're talking about if one dead. No, uh, uh, he was a rebellion son. Listen to the laws. That was the law was given to us. How are we going to deliver from this captivity? How are we going to deliver to have a perfect kingdom set up upon earth? Keeping the laws in the faith of Christ. That's always been the guideline. Exactly. We don't. Verse 21. For thus saith the Lord God, how much more when I send my fourscore judgments upon Jerusalem, the sword and the famine and the noisome beast and the pestilence to cut off from it man or beast. Yet, Behold, therein shall be left a remnant that shall be brought forth, both sons and daughters. Behold, they shall come forth unto you, and ye shall see their way and their doings. Y'all see that part? So the sons and daughters that's going to be saved is, Behold, they shall come forth unto you, and ye shall see their way and their doings. Those are the only ones that's going to make it. Okay? By their doings of righteousness. Their ways and doings of righteousness. Go ahead. And ye shall be comforted concerning the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem, even concerning all that I have brought upon it. And they shall comfort you when ye see their ways and their doings. And ye shall know that I have not done without cause all that I have done in it, save the Lord God. So the Lord has not brought all that destruction on us without cause. He had a just cause to bring us into this hellish condition. Because of our disobedience. Now watch what it says here. Is the same thing that it says in Revelation 18 that we read about earlier in verse 4. Revelation 18 and verse 4. It talks Revelations. about the fall of Babylon. Chapter 18 and verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. What were the plagues? Read the verse that it describes the plagues. Okay. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Now where does it say famine, death, fire? Above. Okay. Um, it's going to be... Eight. Eight. Yeah, eight. Verse eight. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning, and famine, and she shall be utterly burnt with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judges her. So God is going to do that here. So verse 4, one more time, one more time. Verse, verse four. 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, 
that ye be not partakers of her sins. In order to come out of her. That don't mean you can run to another country. That ain't talk. There's no place this fire ain't gonna touch when it hit. And guess what? All the underground bunkers that Esau got, that ain't for our people. Like in New York, they got, uh, you ever seen it around uh, uh, Coney Island Avenue, they got signs, on underground bunkers this way, bomb shelters this way. That's for the white man. That's not for blacks and Latinos out there. They say, when the bombs hit, y'all dead. That's the thought. But that's why Revelation 18 for 14 said what one more? Revelation chapter 18 and 8. Verse 4. Verse 4, I'm sorry. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people. And you know when it says come out of her, it means we got to renew our mind, renew our thinking. Change our Negro, Latino ways into the ways of Israel the, by keeping the commandment. That's what it's saying. Go ahead. That ye be not partakers of her sin. Because if we want to be American minded, we want to be Negro peans, we want to be assimilated here, <laughs> we're going to be partakers of her sins. Her sins is these holidays, these customs they have here in America, even the thought, just the generic thought process of, I'll give an example, I heard a sister say, no, a brother said yes at the family thing, he said uh, he was a feminist. Yep. <laughs> I, didn't, uh, I didn't understand when he said he was a feminist, but you have brothers who will stand up for women's rights to be dominant and or over the man, and they have the right to abortions and all. You're going to die with those thoughts. All those American Negro Pian thoughts, you got to get rid of those thoughts. You got to let them go, or else you're going to die right here. Okay? Because that's nothing what you said that came out of the Bible. You will not find in the Bible feminists. You will not find in the Bible where the Lord ordained women to dominate, rule men, and to have the right, her body is hers, to have an abortion when she wants to have one. That's not in the Bible. But that's in America. That's under democracy, that's under Christianity as well. So if that is your state of mind, you will die here. Okay. What you had? So from there. Three holy children, uh, verse 66. O Ananias, Azarias, and Mishael, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. For he hath delivered us from hell and saved us from the hand of death and delivered us out of the midst of the furnace and burning flame. You see that? So it's, it's, you see how it's using the, the term hell there? And it's in conjunction where it used the word death in the same sentence and fire. Because it's talking, you, those all are interchangeable, okay? Watch this. Um, Sirach 41 and 3. So that's what I wanted. Remember, I couldn't find it. Let me wait. Let me write it because I'll look at my notes tonight. What was I talking about? Let me pen longer. <laughs> that wasn't Sirach. That was what? Three holy children. Three, you know you'd be just be writing notes and you put the wrong thing down. Well, that's me. That's a, y'all might not do that, but I said This is the book of Sirach, Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 41 and verse 3. Fear not the sentence of death. Remember them that have been before thee and that come after. For this is the sentence of the Lord over all flesh. Everybody in here, listen good. The sentence of death is upon all of us. The brother... Barack Bar, we had the funeral for him on Thursday. That was Thursday, correct? The brothers and sisters out there might, I don't know if I put it up on, on the internet. I, don't, I did? So we had the funeral for him, and there was a sister in North Carolina who passed away. Before Christ returns, a remnant of us will die. That is the sentence on all flesh. If you're in the flesh, the sentence is death. There's very few examples that you can read in the Bible of those who escape death. Uh, you had Enoch in Genesis 5, verse 24. Remember, said God, he was not for God, uh, took him, took him up. You read about uh, Christ resurrecting. You read about Lazarus resurrecting. You read about the Peter and them raising the dead. There were very few instances, but the majority of everyone else, now even those that were resurrected, guess what eventually happened to them? Death. Death, that's the sentence on all flesh, unless the Lord takes you up. So now, go to, watch this, 2 Thessalonians 4. And we don't like to talk about it. The black people in Latin, we don't like to talk about it. But you gotta, it's a, it's, a, it's a law. God made that a law in nature on all flesh, death. You have a limit to where you can go. But guess what? 
the most I has in this society put on the minds of the devil. Listen good to what I'm about to say. It might be a hard saying, but listen good to what I'm about to say. The so-called white man in his demonocracy, <laughs> he has set up provisions for death. What I mean by that is he created things called insurance. And black people, we don't like to talk about that. I remember saying to my mother, you got some insurance. Why are you talking about insurance? No damn insurance. What, you want me to die? But her mom already knew she had just had a stroke. But it just, it's, it's, gonna, it's going to happen. Brothers in the school, they say, look, my father, my mother, she, they're real sick. I'm like, listen, make sure their papers are in order. What do you mean? Insurance. Make sure you have the, her, their bank accounts have an ITF and trust for, meaning all you need is their name and date of birth and social security. So that let's say, uh, like when my mom died, my father go to the bank, he said, the bank said, well, you're not in trust for on her, none of her bank accounts. So he says, so what does that mean? They said, that means you have to go hire a lawyer with the death, uh, the certificate of death in order to take the money out of their accounts. So he had to pay like $500 for a lawyer. She only had some, like 2,000 in the, she had like three different bank accounts, only had $2,000. But he was mad as hell. He said, I had to buy a, get a lawyer to do all this. So that's what we, we tell you, brothers and sisters. Have your papers in order. The so-called white man, they set up uh, insurance accounts when they got their kids as young. They say, you know what? Let's do this. And their grandparents set it up and say, this is where, that's why a lot of the so-called Jews, they, um, they get a, a head start in terms of education things of that nature. Why? Because of that insurance money that's always set up there for them. We, on the other hand, we don't want to talk about it. We don't want nothing to do with it. Nope, 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 nope. Read that for me. He wanted Thessalonians 4 and 13. 2 Thessalonians 4 verse 13. So what we, I mentioned uh, on one of the videos we did about a, a medical proxy. Uh, those are free. All you need, I think, is two witnesses on it. Two witnesses where if you're unable to if you're ever hospitalized and are unable to speak, a medical proxy says, I want Captain Zephaniah, Deacon Laba, uh, Officer Manathias, any of them three to speak for me on the, in the chance that I cannot speak for myself. You may have a wife, and we tell brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters go, well, I'm gonna let my wife, or my, I'll use this word, I'll let my spouse do it. Now that might be fine, if your spouse is a fervent believer. And I'm gonna tell you a story. <laughs> there was a sister. It's one of the last schools. She said, oh, shalom. Y'all my shim, y'all shy, That's what we say to Hebrew all the time. Her husband, it was Brother Zion, he passed away. What she did, she was like, <laughs> she went and got his parents, and they sent Caesar Borgia up. It was a Catholic church. Everybody was mad as hell. And I was always saying, I knew this damn. I used the other words, I used colorful words. I can't say it on the mic. I said, I always knew she was a damn demon. Just sitting in shalom. Spirit always told me she don't believe nothing. As soon as that brother died, into the Catholic church. That's what she did. So you better know your spouse. I'm telling y'all, you men, you women, you better know your spouse. If you always got to force your spouse to get read the scriptures, <laughs> read, red flag, ding, 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 he or she don't believe. Just watch. Keep your eyes open. Keep your mind alert. Kids, too. Watch your kids. Some of you got adult kids. You know that kids just wait for you to drop dead. They only hear you saying, Shalom, most high, Christ, bless, wait for you to kick the bucket. Knowing that mama got insurance for me. And as soon as she kicked the bucket, I'm out. You better know that kid. If that if you gotta force that kid to come to the Sabbath class and there's always an argument, that kid don't believe. Okay? Second Thessalonians. It's uh first Thessalonians. First, oh, I'm sorry, yes. No, you, you, uh first Thessalonians chapter four, verse thirteen. Says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Meaning concerning them that died. Right. That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. That you sorrow not. When people die, the Apostle Paul says, don't cry in sorrow the way others do, which have no hope. Go ahead. For if we believe that uh, Jesus... For if we believe. 
For if we believe, go ahead. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again. If we believe that he died and rose again. Come on. Even so them also which sleep in Jesus. Even so them also which are dead in Jesus. Go ahead. Will God bring with him. Will God bring with him. Go ahead. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. For this is the message being sent to you, you children of Israel. Go ahead. That we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. The brothers and sisters, because there's a generation that will not die. And a generation that Christ returns in, that might be this one, it might be the next. I don't know. But those that are alive, what? That which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. You're not going to prevent those that believed in the Lord that died already. You're not going to... To, you're not going to precede them. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. Verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Right. Those that died in the Lord shall rise first. Before you are translated and caught up in the air, it says those spirits that died, those are the first ones resurrected. Go ahead. Verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds uh -huh. to meet the Lord in the air. Wait a minute. Where did we read that? I'll give you a hint. In Matthew. Then we which are alive will be caught up together with the Lord in the air. We read it today. So y'all are going to see that these scriptures are precept upon precept. You just got to know how to connect the dots and connect them well. We read in Matthew about being caught up together with the Lord in the air. It's in Matthew. We read it today. When the pot boy, you asking me or you telling me? Uh, Matthew 24, 30 and 31. Let's read that. Matthew 24, 30 and 31. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven Watch with, this. Uh -huh. with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, uh -huh. and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. That's it. Go back to Thessalonians. Very good. That was the precept. Go back to Thessalonians now. Then we which are alive. Read that. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. See that? That's what Matthew was writing about. It's just talking about the same thing. Go ahead. To meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So Paul said, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. That's why... Our faith got to be so strong because brothers and sisters are going to die. Okay, what is uh? They, what is, give me the scripture because I can't in Psalms where it tells you the average lifespan. The average Psalm some is I think it's like uh, something like seventy or eighty years, something like that. It says, y'all know what I'm talking about. Psalms ninety and ten. Psalms ninety and ten. Okay, watch this. Psalms chapter. 90 and verse 10. So teach us to number our days. Teach us to number our days. What verse are you at? Verse 10. I mean 12, 12, 12. I need to start at 10. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm right. Verse 10. These days of no, our years. The days, the days. The days of our years are three score years and 10. The days of our years are three score. Remember, it scores how much? 20. So three score is 60 years and 10. That means 70. 70 years. Go ahead. And if by reason of strength, they be four score years. And if by reason of strength, you are allowed to live till you're 80. Go ahead. Yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow. Yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow. Go ahead. For it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Go ahead. Verse 11. Who knoweth the power of thine anger, even according to thy fear? So is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our heart. 70 years, and if by strength, 80. Now, you know, some people live to 90, some That's a blessing. But in wisdom, 
We have to learn to number our days, okay? Sometimes we get, especially when we're 20, we think we're invincible. We think we will never die. There's a lot of 20 year olds in Chicago in the grave, okay? What's them all them young kids in, the, in Florida, uh, the club? Remember the little, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, when they got shot up. Got shot up. Those are young boys, young girls. Shot up, bow, 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 dead. If we have wisdom, we will, it says, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. With wisdom, we should say, you know what? I'm going to need this for my, if I die, or I'll say this, when I die, my wife, she's going to need to be able to what? To bury me. Pay off the, uh, the mortgage or whatever. Car note. I need an insurance to cover the stuff. That's what wisdom will do. And wisdom will say and make sure that I walk in the laws of the Most High. That's the first thing. Let me start with that. Wisdom will teach us to stay in the book, in the secret place of the Most High. Then comes the other things. The proxy, the insurance, and all that. That's secondary. Okay? But that's what wisdom will teach you. When you don't have wisdom, you, 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 you carefree. Oh, nothing going to happen to me. Meanwhile, there was a brother. Remember there was a brother on the highway who was in a car crash last year. Oh, yeah, in Oklahoma. In Oklahoma. Instant. Boom. Dead. Another brother, remember he had a, a, a heart attack. Sean. Sean, the brother Sean. He was with his... Wife. On vacation. No, 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 not him. Not him. The one, he had his five-year-old daughter. Oh, Cali? In Cali, right. Oh, yeah. And he was young. How old was he? I don't, I don't remember. He was like something like 22, 23. Yeah, he was very young. Just died right there. The baby was right there with him. He never thought it. Okay. Barack Barr that just passed. And his sister that passed in North Carolina, uh, um... Asthma pump ran out of medicine. She called 911, called her husband. He had the medicine in the car. He drive it back. By the time he got there, she was gone. Gone. These are things that wisdom said, you know what? Let me pre prepare everything. Let me get myself right. Because we ain't right in the head. Hello, this is, I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join our IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.